gentlemen, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World Show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Team, and this is the award-winning fan show. <laughs> I suppose I also could have said that this is the ever-growing, always-expanding award-winning fan show, because as of today, the fan show on Facebook has hit 1,100 likes. That's right. 1-1-0-0. A big thank you, Fan Nation. I think this is the quickest 100 likes we've ever gotten in the show's history, and I owe a big thank you to the efforts of Mr. Craig the Leg Peterson, Charles McCullum and of course coach Billy Back they uh their interviews have been very very popular and well received by the indoor and arena football communities as well as uh fans of football all around so thank you guys again congratulations on your National Arena League championship title it is bittersweet uh, here we are uh a week we're, we're on the eve really, of the NFL regular season, but I can't help but feel a little saddened by the fact that the second uh, Fan Show Tour, Fan Show Tour 2018, has officially concluded. Uh, The next time I travel will not be for anything related to the tour. Um, I believe the the next uh, trip that I have is actually December for San Francisco hosting the Seattle Seahawks, courtesy of the 49ers VP, Robert Alberino. But in between now and then, really it's a toss-up. Nothing that I would do, I think, would be considered the tour because it would be kind of unplanned. I will be applying for credentials relentlessly for so many different uh, events, including all of the regular season home games of the San Francisco 49ers except for their home opener simply because we just don't have enough time to pull those funds to get that that done however beyond that looking at the remaining seven home games uh, I want it I want to sit in that press box I want to be there I want that to be my first NFL credentialed media experience of the San Francisco 49ers which by the way, has been quite the popular conversation on Facebook today. I copied the schedule of the 49ers and pasted it uh, onto my Facebook and then said what I believe their record would be and left it at that. And I have gotten a flurry of comments and some discussion has been sparked, which we will get into in a little bit. Uh, Tonight's episode is a good one. We've got Lisa Winter, uh, one of the first ladies of BattleBots. She actually joined me yesterday uh, because this week has been uh, kind of chaotic in regards to the show and the schedule, but not for, you know, just any reason, for good reason. And I do want to thank all of you so much, as many of you saw on Facebook yesterday, uh, my mom had back surgery. The she had some inflamed discs, the discs that control the you know nervous system of your legs and feet. So it was rather serious surgery. They quoted her at about three and a half to four hours. Five hours later, she was finally out. And I will tell you, at that four and a half hour mark, I was pacing. I was. It was. Uh, Not fun for me because there was no word. It's taken well over the projected time that they had said. So come to find out there was a little bit of a hiccup during the surgery. Uh, There was a lot more uh, fluid loss than they had expected. So um, they had to sort of improvise and they got it done. And she is feeling much, much better today. She was, in fact, up and walking around. But to everyone on Facebook, everyone who shot me a text or a private message or commented, you guys are absolutely amazing. You are Fan Nation, and you guys are simply the best. (laughs) Felt great to have all the love and support. And a quick shout out. If I may, Arlene Peterson, mother of Craig the Leg, she is fantastic. Uh, I mean, she is too kind one, but uh, she has been just 
I, I, like overwhelming almost. She has been so kind to me on the comments on Facebook. Uh, for those of you that uh, may have not seen it, I have shared the link, but uh, my interview, or at least the clip of it, a uh, portion of the interview I did with Craig the Leg after their big uh, National Arena League Championship win, actually made the local news in his hometown of Albany. They were talking about high school football kicking off this weekend and how one of the alum, Craig Peterson, uh, actually just won a national championship and that he had a message for the NFL, and that was that he is NFL ready and just needs the opportunity. So uh, I thank News 10 ABC for using that. Um, you know, if he gets signed out of this, then I mission accomplished. I mean, I've been <laughs> trying to help Craig for the last two years now, pestering teams on social media. Maybe this is finally the bump that he needs, but it was very heartwarming and she has been so kind. Uh, she even went on to say, uh, after wishing my mom a speedy recovery, that she wishes that the news channel would have used the whole interview. <laughs> So thank you, Arlene Peterson. Craig, you have got a great one there. She raised you right. But uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on with this show. It's an impromptu one. Uh, so the surgery is done. My mom is recovering. I'm back from tour. Tour is over. Uh, looking onward and to the future, on to the next, as Nick Hegg would say. And we're going to keep grinding. Uh, the season premiere of The Fan Show is set for uh, Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be pre-recorded, though, not live. There's been too many. Uh, the last couple season premieres had some complications, so we're hoping to avoid that by pre-recording it. Um, so you will hear from comedian Chris Cope, uh, NFL Network's very own Aaron Coscarelli, and Rob, the defending, the reigning defending undisputed champion, Connor Ferguson, myself, and others, whoever can uh, join the Skype conference call. That's how we do our season premiere here on The Fan Show with our live draft the first couple of rounds of the draft whatever uh, can make up for an hour's worth of time and then we post that and we are up and running so uh before we get uh, to the season premiere let us go ahead and do our due diligence here and get through the formalities of what uh you guys tune in for uh three times a week and that is some football and some nonsense and of course we start with the headlines Headlines, of course, brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. My man, Ethan, you guys are loving his stuff. I tell you, I have yet to receive a bad review. They're overstocked a little on small mediums and uh, not so much larges anymore. We are out of XL and double XL. So uh, we need to keep pushing those shirts. We will uh, be ordering more here shortly, and then we will get those out to you. I do encourage you, though, that if you have wanted a shirt... You need to get a hold of me either through the website, email, Facebook Messenger, text message, and you need to order one so that you reserve one, okay? Don't wait for them to come out because there's a chance that by the time they're printed, they're all going to be spoken for, and now you got to wait till the next batch, all right? So don't be that guy. If you want one, order one. We will get you taken care of, okay? Ask ask anybody that's gotten a shirt from me, okay? Nobody has not gotten a shirt <laughs> that's ordered one, okay? So you can take me at my word on this. If you order a shirt, you will get a shirt. Plain and simple, no regrets. Uh, it is the first day of school, second day for some, and next week we'll have even more first days of schools. But there was actually a kid in a fan show shirt for his first day of school. That's right, first day of school, he's fan show official, and that is brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. So hit up Ethan, Ethan at DynamiteEnterprises.com, and he is going to get you taken care of. He can dress your kid up for their first day of school or their special formal event or their dance or their mixer or whatever. You know, if there's a shirt you want, if there's a company you own, if there's a brand you believe in, or a purpose or a message, maybe the anti-bullying squad. He can help slap that beautiful artwork or logo on whatever you need. Hats, shirts, polos, jerseys, socks, underwear, you name it, he's got it. Ethan at Dynamite Enterprises. So first headline is Craig the Leg needs to sign with an NFL team. Okay, NFL, if you're listening, <sighs> sign Craig the Leg. 
Okay, I have his contact info if you'd like it. But seriously, the time is now. Craig Peterson is NFL ready. Sign the man! And you won't have to worry about sending a game to overtime ever again. Because he is going to hit that game-winning field goal for you as time expires. Imagine the feeling you'll get knowing that your game is in good hands. Or I guess in good feet because he's a kicker with his foot. Yes. Anyway, uh, in other news, yesterday the Rams and Aaron Donald agreed to a six-year $135 million contract extension with $87 million guaranteed. I mean, my God, they're just making money fly around everywhere. And that is the richest deal for a defensive player in league history. That's right. League history. Aaron Donald, previous winner. Uh, so it's broken down like this, how much they would make annually. Aaron Donald will make $22.5 million roughly annually. Before that, it was Vaughn Miller. You may know him. You may have heard of him. He was making nineteen point one. million a year before that demarcus lawrence 17.1 and that is a three-way tie with ezekiel ansa and fletcher cox all at 17.1 million and oliver vernon of the new york giants rounds out the top five with 17 million even so uh, congrats aaron donald i guess the rams are going all in it's super bowl or bust for them and i know it seems that way for every team every year but if the Rams don't come away with a Super Bowl win this year, I don't know what the hell is going to happen with that team because they are just chips to the center of the table, flopping it right out there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> here you go, flop. <laughs> uh, in other news, the Texans released wide receiver Braxton Miller. That one kind of surprised me just a wee bit. But that's pretty much it. Uh, the preseason is no more. All right, preseason has come and gone. We have played all the games, all the preseason games. So the next is where it counts. NFL regular season. Ah, it just feels good to say it, you know, just to be able to be like, ah, you know what the next game is? NFL regular season. Yep, I like it. I really, really do. And let's see, what's the first game? What's the one that will kick things off? Well, let's go over that here, shall we? The first game that's going to kick things off, uh, if they can ever get this website to work right. I feel like I should know it off the top of my head, but I don't know it off the top of my head. And that's okay. That is all right. <sighs> I believe... It's the Falcons and the Eagles. Let's see. A regular season. Okay. So your season opener, your NFL 2018 kickoff game is, yes, the Atlanta Falcons versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And that will be at 820 Eastern, 520 Pacific, Thursday, September the 6th. And the fan show's four-year anniversary will be September the 10th. So you might want to mark your calendars for that. We are relaunching the website. Uh, in other news, we do have some high school football in the Spokane area happening this weekend. In fact, uh, tonight at 4 o'clock, we have Damien Memorial High School against Mount Spokane. 5.30, Lewis and Clark versus Shadel Park. Then we have Meade versus Post Falls. Lewis and Clark versus Lake City, or I'm sorry, it was Lewiston versus Shadle Park, and then Lewis and Clark versus Lake City, Gonzaga Prep versus Coeur d'Alene, University versus Sandpoint, and at 8 o'clock tonight, you will have Moses Lake versus Ferris tomorrow at 1 p.m., Lakeland, Idaho, and Rogers. And Bellevue against my alma mater, Central Valley High School. So I'm going to go and try to cover some games tonight. Probably that Lewiston versus Shadle game. And then tomorrow, guess where I'm going to be? I'm going to be out at the Inferno, Eastern Washington University, as they take on Northern Arizona. Or I'm sorry, uh, they will take on Central Washington, the Wildcats. Tomorrow kickoff is at 1.05 p.m. Eastern. 
Uh, BattleBots is on tonight. They're taking a uh, break from their uh, regular scheduled programming. And what I mean by that is that these matches do not count towards their wins and losses going into the 16 seed tournament. So you get kind of a little Labor Day celebration in the terms of it is the first ever USA versus the world. 10 teams will put their championship quests on hold to represent their flags in a global showdown of combat robotics. So representing the U S in the first match, it is saw blaze versus the New Zealand sensation, the up and comer, the young gun end game. Then you have Hypershock from Miami, Florida, and they will be taking on the Netherlands bad boy reality. Then we have Kraken, which I didn't know was from the U.S. Kraken will be taking on Red Devil. That's Red Devil from Canada. Then we have Captain Shredderator. It's about as American as they come. And they're going to be taking on the United Kingdom's Vanquish. And then finally, your main event, your marquee matchup, will be Blacksmith, almost as American as Captain Shredderator. But yes, Blacksmith, one of my favorite bots. They will be taking on uh, the UK's Warhead. So this should be a great event. I'm very excited for it. Uh, It should be a lot of fun. And uh, that is tonight at 5 Eastern, or I'm sorry, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Tune in. And uh, we may have some more video content for you from my time down there with BattleBots. But let's go ahead and get to our uh, portion of the show where I bring on my guest, Lisa Winter. We talk all things BattleBots, past, present, and future with one of the first ladies of the BattleBox. Enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining me now is BattleBots alum Lisa Winter. She's the mastermind behind Mega Tento and is at the judges table for season three, or at least part of it. Lisa, welcome. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I do love uh, bot builders turned judges. Uh, I had, uh, you know, the bad boy about of uh, BattleBots <laughs> on and uh, Mr. Derek Young, and he was he was a blast to talk to. He says, you know, uh, he likes being at the judges table now because it takes a lot of pressure off uh, competing. But um, he says he prefers fights that don't come down to a judge's decision. <laughs> Would you say you concur with that statement? Um, I mean, for the most part, yeah, it's, it's always such a blast to be the one fighting and controlling the robot. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily less pressure at the event though, because like you have to pay attention to every second and make sure you see everything that's going on so that you can fairly judge. Um, but yeah, it's when it's, when it's tight, man, it's like really nerve wracking to try and make the right decision. Gotcha. Well, uh, let's get a little bit of your history. Now, you, of course, as I mentioned, were behind Megatento, but there was a few other bots before that. Uh, I think you're most memorable for that one because that was the ABC season and that was one of the most, you know, outrageous bot designs that we had seen in a while. Um, so how did what was the first bot and what seasons did you compete in of battle bots before this? Um, yeah, well, it was even a bit before then. Um so not many people know because it wasn't broadcast, but uh, there was a thing called Robot Wars in the U.S., mm-hmm. and that started um, 1994. And so I was in that from about 96 on, and I uh, had this robot called Doughboy. <laughs> uh, just like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not entirely sure why I picked that name, um, but that was a lot of fun, and it had a spinning lawnmower blade on the top. Um, and then, yeah, so that was probably one of my favorite robots. Um, and then Tentamushi, which is, um, a lot of people know that from the Comedy Central days of BattleBots. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I do remember that, actually. That was one of the more unique names, kind of sticks with you. Um, your thoughts on Comedy Central days, I sum it up as to it was more of like, it, it got treated as a gimmick, but then it was kind of where people enjoyed it more than I think even Comedy Central thought that people would enjoy? Was that kind of your take from it? Uh, well, trust me, when you're, like, 
when you're in the pits, everything is very serious. <laughs> it is like a serious competition. <laughs> um, of course, we all help each other. You know, it's not a, we're not going to be mean to each other and we all fix each other's robots. But um, it's, you know, it's a real sport. Uh, I think, yeah, it wasn't, um, we didn't really know how it was going to like appear on Comedy Central in the beginning. Uh, until probably until we like got there and started seeing some of the commentators <laughs> and that, like they're all comedians uh but yeah it was good to have a laugh yeah absolutely and then uh battle bots would take a hiatus find a home on abc and then now it's found what uh, a lot of people believe is it's hopefully permanent home, but at least a comfortable home, you know, a good forever home, if so be it, on Discovery. Uh, what, as a fan of BattleBots, the sport, watching it from home play out, knowing that you were there, that you've competed and now judged, uh, how would you compare what we're seeing in Season 3 to, you know, uh, past seasons, ABC days, uh, Comedy Central days? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's definitely... I, mean, I guess the first thing that popped into my head was sort of like Burning Man. Like, um, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, it's like 20 people just like trying to blast some fireworks or, you know, some like throw some sparks at each other um, and like just have some fun on a weekend. And then TV got involved. It got more serious. Um, there was like so many applicants that now you have, there's like a, a huge process to get invited. Um, so... And there's money on the line. <laughs> like, I remember way back uh, a couple years into the Comedy Central Battle Bots where I won, it was some award. Um, it wasn't for fighting, but it was like, it was like the craziest looking robot or something. Um, <laughs> and so I won like two uh, Lego Mindstorms. Um, so, yeah, it's like a little more serious now. Uh, and we're trying to push it that way to get like more serious viewership as like, and look at it as like a real sport, mm -hmm. um, you know, so be, be taken a bit more seriously. And what would you say is the one thing that I, and I don't, I can't recall comedy central days well enough to know if there even is, but is there anything that they used to do in battle bots that you wish they'd maybe, bring back or maybe do like a throwback to i mean it is throwback thursday after all but uh, I, I don't know <laughs> if there's anything missing it seems like they keep changing it but what about you well yeah so that is that is a huge change right now for this season is the the format and the desperado and all of that like you get basically four fights and then we go to the tournament um and i i'm really liking that actually mm -hmm. um we have you know the fight nights right so it's like we get to um, we get to cheer on a a uh, what do you call it like a big end fight that big finale yeah um, and that's yeah I think that's worked out really well um, the thing I personally miss as a builder is is the the smaller weight classes you know it's like it's not um, it's not only like less time or less money or anything like that. But it's a whole different type of design and a whole t uh, different type of build strategy. So I, I think um, I think sixty pounders, possibly even thirty, was one of my favorite to build and fight. And uh, so it'd be cool to have that again. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now. We uh, talked earlier about how you've made the transition from bot builder to judges table. Now, of course, this this type of sport doesn't really have like an age out, you know, uh, limit or any kind of, you know, yeah, I'm 42 now. I think it's time to hang them up and retire. <laughs> Technically, I mean, I, I've spoken to guys that were. Uh, very competitive in the Comedy Central days. You have a vet like Donald Hudson and and guys uh, that were from the you know the the original, they're the Godfathers of the sport. But for you, it, is this maybe just a season off for you? Do you think you'll come back and compete again, or is this a better fit for you? What do you feel? Um, well, yeah, I mean it's true. It's a bit different for me starting so young. It's uh, I'm. I'm not going to be dying out, um, <laughs> but um, it is, you know, it is a lot of stress. I've heard from some builders that, uh, you know, maybe we'll take a year off or something just for like health reasons. I've definitely heard that around the pits. 
Um, but for me, I think it's more of a technicality right now in the TV show business where since I was a judge for a show where there's actual like uh, monetary prizes, there's a certain amount of time where I can't be a participant in the show, um, like after after being a judge. So really, that's that's one of the main factors right now is trying to, you know, we'll see if we get renewed for season four and if it's for the, far enough away from me being a judge to legally be able to compete. Now, why is that? Why is there, because it's not as if you can sway anything in your favor by competing after being a judge. And, and even Derek Young said himself that you guys don't talk at the table necessarily about, you know, your, your decision or, or how you graded that fight. So is there something specific that a fan wouldn't know, not common knowledge that would prevent someone uh, from competing that has judged that might be like, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, there isn't. It's just, it's one of those TV show, game show rules. Wow. <laughs> Where, yeah, it's like, if, because it's not specific to BattleBots at all. It's just oh. any sort of reality show or, you know, any show with money, like you, <laughs> you can't be a part of it for a year. There's the money is probably all the answer people need, uh, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I I didn't know that there was like ex, you know specific rules and regulations for a type of show and then you're absolutely right though BattleBots would follow under a few different categories that's very interesting though I had no idea that you couldn't uh, cuz we have people you know in sports that come out of retirement all the time but I always wonder if you know cuz you have to be retired for so long before you can be Hall of Fame eligible and I wonder if a player mm -hmm. went into the Hall of Fame is there a rule preventing them from coming back and playing and you know details details but that's very interesting to hear that you there has to be a certain amount of time lapsed between being a judge and when you can compete again so that's good to know for the future um, yeah you know it's one of those secret things like there's a, a lot of things when I watch sports where we're like I wonder like why do they make that decision you know do they have a personal uh, issue or it's scheduling, but yeah, a lot of it's like these secret little legal rules of TV. Yeah, so I, I thank you for the info. That's definitely something I did not know yesterday. So you learn something new every day, and I thank you for that, Lisa. Now, looking at season three, uh, of course, you are a fan of the, the bot type that is sort of uh, unorthodox, if there even is such a thing in this sport. But of course, we've seen... <laughs> Bots like Sharko, which I love because it is kind of gimmicky, but it's also very effective. Uh, and then fan favorite Huge has been uh, has taken BattleBots by storm this season. Is there a bot that you have as kind of a personal favorite that's sort of right up uh, your alley? Oh, no. Uh, uh, that's probably something I can't play as a, as a judge. But... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Well, I guess maybe not favorite then, but one that you just kind of... I guess keen to as far as their style there that might be a better way to put it uh, well yeah I mean just uh, you mentioned the sort of uh, abnormal ish robot you know not just the metal box and that's definitely my style um, so any of the new robots anyone trying something that hasn't been done before is like totally on the top of my list because you know it's just like there's spinners there's flippers there's it's just been so limited, you know, and um, I really want to see some experimentation and something new. Yeah, I, I completely agree from that. I'd like to see something new uh, and effective, something that can maybe shake up the game that is BattleBots. You see a lot of spinners, a lot of saws, and a lot of flippers. Uh, we'll see if uh, anybody else has an idea. Uh, Double Jeopardy had the cannon, you know, and I don't know how, if, mm -hmm. if anybody's going to copycat that, but, you know, you have sort of, you're looking for that, that knockout punch with that one shot that they've got. But props to those guys for trying to be innovative in a sport that obviously, you know, embraces it. Um, now, yeah, I, and scary as shit, man. Like, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's just scary, you know, because it's, it's we're, we're just normal people, like building something in the garage, basically, and then we show up, and uh, it, it's 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 not like, yeah, there's there's just people judging us for safety based on uh, their experience and. There's still a lot of danger involved. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Well, last thing I wanted to touch on here is that, you know, uh, in the world of sports, which I cover a lot of, obviously there's, um, you know, sports in general, very 
male dominated uh type of um, sport hobby i guess just way of life you know and uh there are women's you know divisions of everything women's basketball uh there's softball even women's football but you know we're seeing a lot of sort of crossovers where people are becoming more and more i guess on an equal playing field well battlebots knows no gender it knows no uh height weight or anything uh, with the exception of course of the weight regulations for your butt but as far as the drivers the creators and the people behind the magic uh, that we see in the battle box um we have seen a sort of resurgence of women competitors and leanne cushing who i had on the show uh just a couple of weeks ago i think actually just the the last episode i did um she mentioned that it was something that she was very excited about one to be a part of but two because she knows that women like yourself uh did so much for women in the sport how does that make you feel knowing that you were kind of a pioneer uh for (laughs) women in battle bots and and um you know what do you see for the future of the sport well, now thinking about it now, it's just great. I, it probably it was not on my mind in the beginning. I just wanted to build something fun and dangerous, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just like attack some other robots and uh, but myself stay safe, which is uh, exactly what you were saying. It's a really great sport to do that where you're not physically in the arena and anyone can compete. Um, you know, your body, your gender is not going to... Uh, you know be be too different you don't need to have uh, a male battle bots and a female battle bot that would just be crazy <laughs> um but yeah um it's it's one of those things that I, I think some of the other females uh mentioned similar feelings where um we just lacked that part of the brain or ignored it about like who you know, like who am I to be in this you know like this uh this event this competition yeah we just wanted to do it and so we went for it um the really cool side effect though is that I'm finding out I'm getting fan mail from kids who are like from, from little girls who just didn't know this was an option and um as someone who didn't think about that that just it, it's so surprising that these girls are watching the show and they've like they didn't know a female could could build a robot before oh wow it just it just blows my mind and it it makes me um just really happy that there's some females on the show to inspire the next generation yeah i I couldn't have said it better myself and it's very you know surprising almost sad but you know at least the word is out there now at least that wall or ceiling has been broken where you know little girls that are inspired by you no longer think that it's an unattainable goal so props to you and women like leanne and the rest of the female bot competitors uh even even <laughs> the the vasquez family and their mom because it's a family affair with team whiplash and and you gotta love uh something like that it's now uh, Friday, there is a special episode of BattleBots. Uh, USA versus the world. Ten teams will put their championship quests on hold to represent their flag in a global showdown of combat robotics, uh, per the official BattleBots Instagram. Um, now, this season has, in my mind, exceeded expectations. It's gone above and beyond. The new format is great, and it's probably going to end up being about twice as long as its last season on ABC. But with where we are in the season, do you like kind of putting things on hold for something like this, or, or would you prefer if we push through to the ultimate goal, which is, of course, the 16 seed tournament and then crowning a champion? Well, I mean, every fight is, is uh, ex- for me to watch so uh and it's different for me because like i know the outcome (laughs) so (laughs) the the road leading there is not necessarily something i i like you know can't wait to see um so i just want to see more destruction again and uh (laughs) see all my friends (laughs) yeah yeah so yeah (laughs) Well, it is uh, USA versus the world, which I, I think is uh, it's a interesting concept. I would kind of like it to be, I guess, more of like the world versus it, it, itself, you know, where it's not just USA <laughs> uh, going against the bots from other countries. But I think, uh, you know, it's a nice little pause, a nice little break, especially since this week a lot of kids are going to be going back to school. So uh, it'll be a nice little breather for everyone, get collected, get settled back in, and then more battle bots probably uh, – 
business as usual next week. But anyway, Lisa, I do want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk some uh, robot fighting action here on the fan show. And uh, I hope that uh, we see you back in the battle box real soon. And, uh, you know, but uh, you're all, you're perfectly fine at the judges table too. You're a, a <laughs> perfect candidate to have up there, making sure that these fights go in the right favor. Well, thanks so much for having me. And yeah, you will see definitely a few more weeks of me on this season. And, uh, it's, there's, there's, there's some, a lot of, uh, controversy coming up. You Ooh. know, I can't say more, but just, <laughs> it's, it's going to be good. Oh, uh, well, there you have it. Lisa Winter with a perfect teaser for the rest of season three <laughs> of BattleBots. Thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of your night, Lisa. Yeah, you too. All right. All right, once again, that was Lisa Winter, one of the first ladies of BattleBots, and it's always a good conversation here when we talk about robot fighting time. Tonight, it is robot fighting time, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on the Discovery Channel, USA versus the world. Pick a side, pick a country, enjoy it, because none of this counts towards the end game. It's just a little impromptu fun, just like we're having some impromptu fun here on the fan show tonight. Which uh, I did want to also let you know I had a little bit of impromptu fun yesterday. Uh, While my mom was in surgery and they said it was going to be three to four hours, I had uh, lunch with my aunts. And, uh, you know, it was it was tough because I I hate hospitals. I really do. Not going to lie. I've been to hospitals for more bad than good. Uh, we'll, We'll just leave it at that. But so I, I get very anxious. Um, it's hard for me to focus really on anything, think clearly or, uh, you know, straight at all. So I had to I had to leave and I went and I was like, where can I go to clear my head? And I knew just the place. I went to Indy's Barber, my man, Jason and Dylan, uh, his his assistant there or the other barber at Indy's Barbershop. But look, Jason and Dylan are great guys and they do fantastic work i can't say enough about them because uh i went there and i was like yeah my mom's in surgery right now and i just need a place to as a distraction to clear my head and they're like have a seat let's get you cleaned up and they did and we talked fantasy football we talked business uh it was fantastic so thank you jason and dylan you guys are the best uh, I encourage you all to go and see some of the best in the uh, barbershop business. Quality haircuts and hot towel shaves. I got a quality haircut yesterday. I'm feeling fresh and fine. That Friday feeling. We're going into the weekend. I'm going to cover some high school football tonight. And tomorrow I will be out at the Inferno for EWU. And I feel like I am looking my best. Thanks to Jason and Dylan at Indy. 7-Eleven North Monroe Street. If you go in and say, I heard about you guys on the fan show, they are going to hook you up with a 15% discount. They're going to make you look fresher than ever. They are the real deal. They are closed for today through Labor Day. So I'm sorry. You should have gone in there while you had the chance. Been talking about them for a couple weeks now. But you guys want to make sure that come Tuesday, you are one of the first ones through the door. Tell them that the fan show sent you to get a quality haircut and a hot towel shave. Andy's Barbershop, 7-Eleven North Monroe Street. Uh, now, I mentioned that there was some controversy earlier. And uh, I, I, I say that with a giggle because I don't know <laughs> what, uh, what the controversy is. Uh, because I try to avoid controversy. But anyway, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I posted the 49ers 2018 season schedule. And I all I did was simply post it with the caption 11-5, and because that's what I believe the 49ers will finish with this upcoming season. 11 wins, 5 losses, no ties, please. There's no place for ties in football. There's just not. Okay, This isn't baseball. This isn't any other sport that really you can expect there to be a tie. This isn't soccer. Okay. This is football. We need wins or losses, no ties. And that caused quite the, uh, reaction. My buddy, Mike Walt, former, uh, assistant coach of the Spokane Wolfpack. He's in, uh, my personal fantasy league here in Spokane. We're drafting tomorrow. He said six and 10. I think he's crazy. Six and ten. That's what they finished with last year, and it took Jimmy G to rattle off five of those in a row against the likes of the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Playoff teams. And he thinks six and ten. That's funny. Then we also had my buddy Funk, Jeremy Funk, 
seven and nine, maybe eight and eight. And then a guy I used to work with, Matt, who's a Raiders fan. Uh, Funk is a Seahawks fan, if that tells you anything. Uh, Matt says eight and eight. And then another Matt, one of the BattleBots, the guy behind, oh, Kraken. Yeah, he says Niners should have a good year with a half decent QB at the helm. I don't see anyone in there that good. I think 12 and four with Jimmy healthy is perfectly reasonable. Matt, I knew there was a reason I liked you. And good luck in the tournament this evening, USA versus the world. I hope Kraken comes out on top. <laughs> then we had my buddy Mike. Uh, he's a Niners fan up here in Washington. He wanted to know what five games I believe they will lose. And uh, Coach Brian Schmidt, Schmitty from the Carolina Cobras says he wouldn't be surprised at 10-6, and six, but he feels 9-7, 8-8. And, eight and, eight. and then Brandon, who's an Eagles fan, nothing against Farouk, but he's just – Oh, sometimes Eagles fans. He says seven and nine at best. So the five losses that I see on here. Week one at the Vikings. I mean, Jimmy G has had an incredible run, but I don't think that really anybody anytime soon will beat Big Ben's 13 win streak uh, their first year. That was what Big Ben's record was as a starter, was 13 and 0. That is crazy. Now, that wasn't all in the same season. No, no, no. But for, for Big Ben to, to do that, that's going to be – that's a tough beat right there. That's tough to, to do. So I don't think Jimmy G – I mean, he would need to win the next seven uh, to tie, and then he would need to win one more to beat that record. I think they lose their opener at the Vikings. Vikings are just – they're still very good defensively. I don't know what Kirk Cousins will do, but he's got plenty of weapons there to to do what he wants. So this game is on the road. Vikings are very much upset over how the season ended for them last year. And normally when the 49ers have won their season opener, they have not gone on to do very well the remainder of the season. So I'm okay taking a week one loss on the road in Minnesota if it means the remainder of the season is very, very good. Then I see them beating the Lions at home for the home opener. Then I see um, the Chiefs are the fifth game that I see they could possibly lose. It's either going to be the Chiefs or another team. Uh, the Chargers, I believe that they will win. Of course, both the Chiefs and the Chargers, back-to-back -back road games. So September, uh, three out of their five games are on the road or three out of their first four games are on the road. That's a tough start to a schedule, okay? Then I believe that they will beat Arizona at home, and then they go right back on the road again. So now three out of four for the next, starting out the, the next month, are on the road again. October 15th against Green Bay, I believe that will be their second loss. That's, that's a tough gig. Aaron's got that big contract now, and he's going to be feeling good. Week six is always a tough bet for teams. So I think on the road in Lambeau, they're going to take that loss. And I'm not happy about it. And then, sad to say, I believe that they will lose back-to-back -back games. They play the Rams at home. The Rams, 49ers have swept the Rams the last two seasons, and people can't figure out why. I believe this year the Rams will sweep the Niners. The Rams are certainly putting all the right pieces in all the right places to, to ensure that. So I think that the Rams will account for two of their five losses. So, so far we have the Vikings, the Packers, the Rams twice, including the one at the very end of the season, December 30th in L.A. And the fifth one is either going to come from the Chiefs or maybe even, maybe, maybe, Maybe the the Raiders at the Giants. Both of those are home games, and those are after the Cardinals game. So they're on the road against the Cardinals. I believe they'll win that. And then they play Raiders, Giants at home before a bye week. Good part of the schedule. Uh, they could potentially lose either one of those because you just never know. Those are 50-50 teams. You never know about the Raiders or the Giants. Then after the bye week, they're on the road for two straight against the Tampa Bay Bunks and the Seattle Seahawks. I do not believe the 49ers lose to the Seahawks this year. I believe that uh, the Seahawks' uh, days of bullying the 49ers are over. 
And now they could lose that one and split the series with the Seahawks. Uh, this first one is December 2nd in Seattle. That could be their fifth loss. The Chiefs could be their fifth loss, or the Raiders or Giants. But 11-5 and five is where I have them. The rest of the schedule is against the Broncos, the Seahawks again, and the Bears. All three of those games are at home, and then they will finish out the regular season on the road against the Rams, and that, I believe, will be their fifth loss of the season. Could they be a wild card team? I think they'll be in contention all the way up until probably that uh, that game against the Rams. They'll lose that and they'll get knocked out of the, the postseason picture uh, because I think that that game might come down to the Rams and, and seeding for them. So that's just my feelings on it, all right, folks? Like, I'm not trying to stir any pots or start any troubles because, uh, you know, it's I do enjoy – my team. So I'm going to be optimistic about it. 11 and 5 49ers. And I do want to thank all of you for tuning in this evening. Enjoy BattleBots night. Enjoy college and high school football this weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend, folks. You guys have earned it. You guys have been awesome. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners. And it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his players' blood? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.